If you're an artist or graphic designer or photographer or illustrator, you might have heard about print on demand, also known as POD. And you're kind of wondering, is this worth it? Should I look into this? How do I get started? And how does it even all work? <laughs> if that's the case, then this video is for you. Let's dive in. Bonjour, my name is Deb and I'm the founder of Tizitco, a membership community for makers and handmade shop owners just like your fabulous self. You can learn more about our community Tizit HQ via the link below this video, but for now, let's jump straight into today's conversation, what you should know about selling via print on demand as an artist. So. What I want to do today is give you a high level overview to help you understand how POD or print on demand works, decide if it's something you want to try and then talk about what you need to do to get started. Let's start with a quick overview of what exactly POD is. So print on demand is a third party order fulfillment method where you can get your design printed on products and packaged and shipped to your customers on a per order basis. So the items are printed as soon as an order is made and shipped directly from the third party manufacturer to your customers. So for example, your customer buys from you as little as one product and you get paid 50 bucks for it. Their order goes to the POD supplier that you have selected. The POD supplier creates, prints, manufactures the product. The POD provider packages it, then sends it to the customer at a cost of, for example, $20. The customer receives the product. You keep the profit between the retail price and what the POD charged you, in this case, $30. Okay, now let's cover the benefits of actually using POD as an artist. And it has a lot of advantages for artists. The first being that it allows you to sell your work in various ways. If you're an artist, a graphic designer, photographer, illustrator, there may be some people who love your artwork, but they don't necessarily want it on their wall. They may already have artwork or decorations on their wall. And even if they love your work, wall space is limited people don't buy stuff for their wall all that often right but they buy other products right they buy mugs and they buy stationery and they buy things that have images on them and if they love your artwork they might want your artwork to be on those products so it's a way of broadening massively the amount of people that you can reach and sell to by presenting your artwork in different formats and on different products Another advantage is that there is no need to invest in inventory because of how print on demand works, which means that it's very low risk and it's also very low cost. Back before POD existed, you'd go to a print company and say, I want to print X amount of t-shirts with this design on them. You had to pay for it up front and take the risk of having that inventory sitting in your garage and not knowing if it would sell or if you just even get that investment back, right? And actually you can still do that. It's just that you don't have to now because you can do POD instead. So with POD, you really only pay when you sell an item. So again, no need to invest in inventory and very low risk, low cost, really great alternative here. The other thing is the logistics are taken care of. You don't need to worry about printing, shipping, packaging, and all that kind of stuff, right? Which leaves you with more time to actually be an artist and create more products. It's also a really good way to try new things, to put more products out there without needing to, again, invest in inventory and all that. So it's easy to test new ideas without taking on much risk. If you're listening to this and thinking, okay, I'm kind of interested, Deb, <laughs> what do I need to do to get started using POD? And there are two things then that you need to think about. First, you want to consider what type of products would work best for the specific type of artwork that you're making. For example, you're probably not going to print fine art on something like a duvet or a bedding set. But if you make digital patterns and illustrations, printing on duvets and sheet sets could work really well. So you want to really think about what products are a good fit for your artwork. Second, you also want to think about the type of people who are going to be interested in this artwork. What kind of products do they like to use? Will they want a rug for their dining room or a coffee mug for their commute? Once you've thought about those things, then you can start to look at all the product choices out there and you can choose some that are a good fit for both your art and the people who might actually enjoy your art. So let's talk about some of these different product choices. The first thing you can use POD for is the most obvious and it's art itself. So here we're not printing on products yet. We're just doing fine prints, frame prints, posters, stretch canvas, you name it, all these different kinds of mediums for printing your art itself. You can also print your art on apparel. Um, there are endless choices here. Socks, dresses, hoodies, baby clothing, t-shirts, everything. <laughs> just think about anything that people can wear and you can print your stuff on it. <laughs> there is also an endless list of household items that you can have your art printed on, such as accessories like cases for phones, covers for iPads and laptops, stationery like notebooks, cards, 
wrapping paper, linen, bed sheets, duvet, blankets, coffee mugs, kitchenware, rugs, curtains. <laughs> there are just a few of the options out there. So you'll want to take the time to read about your options and make smart selections for your market. Once you know which products you want to offer with your artwork design or photos, then you need to find a production partner, which is the company that's going to actually print your design on the product, package it and ship it to your customer. We've all heard of the big POD companies like Printful and Printify, but there are many other good choices out there the production partner that you choose is really going to depend on the type of products that you've selected for example some companies would be better choices for stationery other companies might have better choices for clothing and so that's really going to depend on your specific situation once you choose your production partner the next question is okay I've got someone that's going to print this for me and send it to my customers, but I still need to sell it to my customers, right? And how am I going to do that? So you've got three different options to sell your POD products. The first is production partners that also are an actual marketplace. So for example, Redbubble and Society6 not only do the printing and the shipping for you, but they also act as marketplaces, meaning that you can list your product on there and shoppers can go and buy it from there. The second way to sell your POD products is on actual marketplaces like Etsy. Most of the beat production company integrate very easily with marketplaces like Etsy, so you can open an Etsy store and sell your POD products pretty easily. And then the final option is to sell on your own website. And again, Shopify, WooCommerce, all those big kind of website platform usually integrate really easily with production partners. So once you choose the products that you'll offer, your production partner, and decide how you will sell your POD products, all that's left is to market them. Since you don't need to worry about the logistics of the sale, you can focus your time on doing the marketing and let the POD do the rest. Now I'd love to know what questions you might still have about using POD to sell your art so I can create more videos on the topic for you. This is a huge opportunity I definitely want you to consider. So please, 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 drop a comment below, let me know what concerns, doubt, or more specific questions you have about using POD to sell your art. I'll make sure to try and cover those in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching and until next time, au revoir.